Hello, everybody. My name is Barry Pollard. I'm in the Chrome Developer Relations team here at Google, uh, specializing in web performance. And I'm here to talk to you about a new feature that we've been adding to Chrome over the last couple of years that has potential to dramatically improve the performance of your website, and to move it from not just loading fast, but to loading instantly. Because let's be honest, web performance can be tough. There's a lot to learn and a lot to understand. And in part, this is due to the inherent nature of the web. The web is a globally distributed platform and requires sending requests back and forth across potentially large distances to get content for that web page. And that is limited by some fundamental physics. We can't go faster than the speed of light. And believe it or not, electricity and network requests are not that far off the speed of light. As you navigate around the site, more requests have to make that same travel back and forth across those distances. And expectations from visitors only go up for navigations around the same site. You'll get a little bit of leeway if people click to go to your site while they wait for the site to load. But once it's loaded, to click with, within that site, if it is slow, they will 100% blame your site for not being fast. Four years ago, Google introduced the Core Web Vitals, which consists of three metrics to broadly measure the three different aspects of the user experience. One of these measures is page load speed which is represented by the largest contentful paint metric, or LCP for short. LCP measures the time from when the user started clicking on a, a link until the largest bit of content from the page was displayed, typically a hero image, the H1 element. Each of the core web vitals has thresholds. And for LCP, that's 2.5 seconds, under which it's seen as good, or four seconds, over which it's seen as poor, and anything in between is, meh, needs improvement. We recommend measuring these uh, thresholds at the 75th percentile to ensure they're reflective of the majority of page visits. And we've seen huge improvements in how websites perform in this metric since introducing LCP. Over 70% of desktop sites now meet the good threshold for the majority of their page views. And we, nearly 60% of mobile websites do the same. Since the introduction of the LCP metric, both measurements have increased by over 36%, increases of 19 and 16 percentage points, respectively. The 2.5 second threshold was set with a combination of user experience, research, but also achievability in mind. There's little point in setting a threshold that is simply unattainable for the vast majority of sites. We wanted to set a threshold that would encourage sites to improve their, their performance but not discourage them from even starting. And we think we got that threshold right. But while 2.5 seconds does represent a good user experience, a faster load would be even better. Because 2.5 seconds is still quite a long time. One, two, two and a half. Stepping out of the web context, if you're reading a book or an e-book in these times, you'd be frustrated if it took more than two seconds to actually turn the page. Or, I don't know about you, if you've got a, a television and you change channels and you're flicking up, whenever that's more than a few seconds, that's really noticeable and lagging. It's quite irritating. But the web has these built-in limitations I talked about before. So we can't consistently get faster than this 2.5 seconds. There is no magic solution to web performance. Or is there? To improve loading speed, we normally try to concentrate and just making sites load faster. Easy, yeah? And we focused a lot on this option, helping developers optimize their page to load the right resources in the right order. But there's always going to be limits to how much you can optimize here. An alternative optimization is to load in advance. That way, the user doesn't pay the full cost of that navigation as they navigate. And the user experiences a fast site. And recently, we spent a lot of time looking at this second option, and we want to make that easier. And we're pleased to be able to present this work here. The Speculation Rules API is a new API from the Chrome team that allows you to speculatively load the next content, the next navigation, in advance of the user actually navigating there. It allows you to prefetch or even fully pre-render a future navigation. So when the user clicks on that link, it's just quicker. How much quicker? Well. With a full pre-render, this allows a dream of instant navigations. In the field, 
One site has seen a 20 millisecond LCP, which is pretty much indistinguishable from instant. And that's a real field number. It's not some hypothetical lab simulation. And I'll talk about some more results that sites have seen later on. So just take that as a little taster of the possibility with this API. And this is similar to the improvements we've seen with the back forward cache, or BF cache. We've been advocating that as a performance improvement for the last couple of years. And it's recommended to optimize for the BF cache. But that only helps with revisiting pages. Speculative navigation deals with future navigations. And so it complements the BF cache very well. And the Chrome browser also speculates using the same technology as speculation rules. When you type common URLs as you navigate around into the, the address bar, or when you use the bookmarks bar, Chrome is speculatively pre-rendering those pages so that they load quicker. You may have noticed over the last year, using your bookmarks bar has got a lot quicker in Chrome. And these are all ways to achieve instant navigation experiences. Now, an important point for this API is it's for full page navigations as controlled by the browser. Single page applications, or SPAs, have their own methods of updating only the content that has changed and are not in scope for this API. This API allows us to bridge, <coughs> this API allows us to bridge the potential gap between a multi-page app, or web page, and a performant SPA. Saying that, SPAs can still benefit from this API, as the SPA itself can be pre-rendered from another page and potentially avoid any of those frustrating loading, experience, uh, loading spinners that we all experience. We've worked really hard to make this API as simple as possible, but also leave open the option for more advanced use cases. Let's delve a little deeper into how it works. Web developers have had the ability to preload and prefetch in the past using the link rel syntax. But often those were used more for sub resources, JavaScript, CSS, images that you want to uh, load quickly. They don't particularly work well for navigation resources, the HTML documents themselves. They have a number of interoperability issues where they look like they're working, but often they don't. So we, avoid, we recommend avoid using them for these. Chrome has also experimented with full pre-rendering before with a link rel pre-render. But that was kind of a basic implementation with a number of issues. We've removed the pre-rendering ability a few years ago, and we, we kind of consider this API deprecated. Speculation rules is link rel, rel pre-render done right, with lots of considerations of when it should trigger, and just as importantly, when it should not trigger. We've also carefully considered what happens for certain APIs that don't make sense during a pre-rendering stage. Auto-playing videos and pop-ups. These are held back until the page is navigated and activated. Rather than build on the link rel syntax, speculation rules is a more expressive JSON-based API. At its most basic, the API simply requires adding a JSON object in a script element with a type speculation rules containing a list of same origin URLs on the page to pre-render. This example asks the browser to pre-render two URLs, next.html and next2.html. Chrome can then start up two background processes for those two links. Think of it like having two hidden background tabs working in advance behind the scenes. Then, if the user clicks on one of those links, the pre-rendered page is swapped in for the current page. To the user, nothing is different. The page just loaded faster. The API also supports prefetching navigations. That is, fetching the HTML document itself without all the sub-resources and without rendering it. This can be a good starting point for those wanting to be a bit more cautious when first starting out with this API. Later, we'll talk about some of the considerations some sites, particularly the more complex ones, may need to be aware of, which might make prefetch more attractive initially. And as you can see, prefetch has the exact same syntax as pre-render. URLs to speculate can be included in specific page types for common URLs that are likely to be navigated to next. On pages with a series of steps, a learning course, for example, you could prefetch or pre-render the next step of the course, as there's a high likelihood of the user navigating to that. Or on a new site, you may want to prefetch or pre-render the headline article, if many users typically click on that. 
URLs can also be injected into pages by adding the JSON declaration through JavaScript for more powerful use cases. How the list of URLs to inject is determined is entirely up to you. Perhaps it will depend on how the user interacts with the page, or be based on analytics of what typical users do to this page next. Machine learning also has huge potential here, and we have some examples on that coming up later. The JavaScript option also allows you to update the list of URLs throughout the page lifetime, as more indicators are received to the best pages to speculate. And this is done through standard DOM manipulation. Multiple speculation rules on a page are supported, so new speculation rule sets can be injected. And old rule sets can simply just be removed, which will cancel any speculations for that rule set. The speculation rules API is available today in Chrome. And you can add it to many existing pages right now. And this API is a progressive enhancement. For browsers that do not support the API, they'll simply ignore it as an unrecognized script type. You don't need to completely rewrite your web page to a new stack. You don't need to use a particular framework or platform. You just add script element to existing pages. In fact, you may not even need to change your page at all. Most CDNs these days allow you to inject content or headers at the edge. Edge workers can be used to inject the JSON declaration onto the page itself based on whatever logic that we see fit or that the CDN might know. And the API even supports referencing the JSON declaration through a URL provided as an HTTP header. Speculation, by its very nature, means taking an educated guess as to what page the user might navigate to next. To reduce the guesswork, we can wait until the user gives us a hint as to what they want to navigate to. There are JavaScript libraries that do that. And when the user hovers over a link or starts to mouse down on it, they spring into action and attempt to prefetch that link and give you a head start. And even that small gap between the pointer down event and the click event is usually enough to get a head start and give a little bit of a performance improvement. The Speculation Rules API builds these types of heuristics right into the browser. So you can run this without JavaScript. Earlier this year, we launched a new feature of the Speculation Rules API called Document Rules to handle this common use case of hovering or starting to click on any link in the document. Document Rules allows you to tell Chrome what links in the page are eligible to be prefetched or pre-rendered based on URL patterns or CSS selectors. And it also allows you to tell when to trigger those speculations. To tell Chrome what links to consider, you specify a where object instead of a list of URLs. In the first example on the left, it says all same origin links are eligible for pre-rendering. I'll get into when they're pre-rendered in a second. Uh, the second example on the right, oh, it says only those links which uh, specifically mark with a pre-render class are eligible. And you can change this class to whatever suits you. You can build up more complex where patterns, including exceptions using the and or not keys to exclude certain URLs, as shown in this example. Here, we're excluding the WP admin page used for WordPress administration, and links specifically marked with a do not pre-render class, or links marked with a rel no for all those. Typically, you don't want those ones um, to be seen in advance. We've also added an eagerness setting to decide when to prefix the, or pre-render. This can be set to conservative, only on pointer down when the user actually starts clicking on the link. Or moderate, which is on click on pointer down, but also when the user starts hovering over the link and they've been hovering over 200 milliseconds or more. And finally, immediate or eager, both of which prefetch or pre-render as soon as possible. At present, this option is usually better suited for, list of, uh, for a list of URLs rather than document URLs. And the reason, by the way, that we have two identical settings at the minute is we plan to separate these out in the future because the Chrome team is working on improving the precision of some of these settings with more advanced heuristics beyond hovering or pointer down, especially for the mobile case where hover is generally not an option. So watch this space as we improve this. Document rules with eagerness means that the same speculation rules can be, object, can be added to any site in the page. You don't need to decide per page which URLs to add in there. This greatly simplifies the deployment of this API. The example here is a simple but powerful rule set that would likely benefit many websites with little downside. Alternatively, sites can mix and match rules here. Perhaps 
more was pre-rendering the most common link in advance with a e uh, high eagerness setting, but still covering the other links in the documents with a more moderate setting. Document rules, again, are available today in Chrome and Chromium-based browsers. They're not behind a flag. They're not anything you need to enable. These are in production and ready to use. OK, next I want to talk about DevTools support, because this is fantastic. The Chrome team has done a lot of work to give developers all the tools they need to fully understand this API and see what's doing. Um, so let's see these tools in action. We'll use a demo site. I know, I know we'll get to a real site in a second, but we'll start with a demo site, so bear with me here. So we load the demo site, and we're going to go into DevTools. What we've done is we've added three new panels under the Application tab to control speculation loads. Um, and when you load a page with speculation rules, in the top right, you can see whether the page itself was loaded with uh, by the API, and then also what URLs it has speculated. Here we can see 18 speculations have been initiated by this page. And that corresponds to the 18 fruits that you see on the left. Now, some of you might say there's 19 fruits, but one of them is repeated. So the API is clever enough not to pre-render -pre the same URL. Um, if we look at the rules uh, panel, we can actually see the JSON declaration. So you, I say you can have multiple JSON declarations. We've only got one on this page. And this is the JSON. So we're basically using document rules. Um, this, by the way, is the same thing that you'll see in the DOM, so you can actually move up to the Elements panel. And you can hunt around and find out where you injected it, but to save you that hassle, we just make it available nice and simply within these application panels. So yeah, document rules, we're matching all the URLs, that's why you see all 18 fruits um, uh, eligible, but we've also added this not clause here to say, don't um, include recipes in there. And if we scroll down the page, there's some recipes here, banana split, broody smoothies. They're not eligible to free render for whatever reason. Maybe they do more complex things. We've also set the eagerness setting to moderate. So that's the, um, the hover activity. So as we hover over a page, um, let's do that now. We'll hover over one of these links. In the top right, we can see 18 not triggered. But when we hover over the links, we go to 17 not triggered and one ready. Then if we move into the specula speculations panel, we can again see all the eligible link, one of which is ready. And as we hover over other links, we suddenly see them become ready. Now, importantly, Chrome only holds two in memory at once with, uh, for this moderate setting. So as we hover over the Kiwi link, we eject ap Apple and say it's no longer eligible, just to save memory. And if we hover over Pineapple, we'll eject the next oldest link, which in this case is orange. OK, and, and you can re-speculate, by the way. So if we hover over apple and orange again, and then if we actually look at orange, you can um, use this panel to get some more information. So we can click on it. It will tell you if the speculation succeeded or if it failed and why it failed. And this is the really clever bit. You can actually switch dev tools to have a look at these background pages. So if we flip to orange, and go to the Elements panel. This is the Elements panel, the full DOM of that orange page. You can see the H1 shows orange. We can flick it back to the page that we're actually viewing, where we've got common fruits. So you've got the full DevTools experience of that. Similarly, in the console, we've got the console logs of that. Um, and again, flip back and forth to the main panel and to ourselves. The Sources panel, as well, is the full Sources panel of what that page is loading. The Network panel, you can go through your HTTP headers exactly what's going on. Images, you want to actually see the images? You can see them. Flicking back to the application panel, and at the minute, we're not, sh uh, I'll go to speculative load summary panel. We're not showing anything on this page, but if we go back to the main one, we can see that we have 14 URLs that are not triggered, two URLs that success, that's the apple and the orange, and two URLs that failed. They haven't really failed. They pre-rendered earlier, but then we evicted them from the cache whenever we um, replay out those. We click on the orange, we get the success in the top right, but more importantly, an LCP time of 78 milliseconds. And I'm going to stop there and give you the round of applause I know you want to give for that. <laughs> Seriously, though, 18 millis uh, sorry, 78 milliseconds, that is like unbelievable. Just to actually draw the pixels on the screen in that time is uh, impressive. So this really is instant uh, browsing. OK, enough talk. Let's see this in action on a real website. Um, Ray-Ban implemented speculation rules on their website. Uh, and as you'll see, this is a media-rich interactive website. 
Uh, it's Ray-Ban, so I guess we'll look at sunglasses. Uh, if we load up the sunglasses, I've got DevTools open in the bottom, you can see here. And as we're hovering over the various sunglasses, we can see those pre-rendering, much like in the same demo. And when we click on the page, it loads instantly. And this is a rich, complex page. It would normally take a little bit of time to render. Um, it also pre-renders the next page, the Customize It page. And again, you can see, just clicking on it, it loads instantly. Now, that was pretty quick, so let's just watch it one more time. We go into sunglasses, we do there, and even in this fast connection, you see the sunglass page itself, which doesn't use it, takes a little bit of time to load. But uh, we're over in here, we're pre-rendering, we click, and boom, instant load. Now, here you might notice we're already, we've gone with a higher eagerness setting here, because it's quite a complicated page, so it's already speculated that customized link in advance, and it's giving a lot more lead time to go there. And when we click on it, it's there. And again, this was achieved with a simple insertion of a speculation rules JSON object onto the page without any other changes to the page. Ray-Ban have implemented this for their US visitors, and they're rolling out to the rest of the countries as we speak. Tokopedia was another early tester of speculation rules. And Tokopedia is an Indonesian technology company with a leading e-commerce platform with more than 1.8 billion registered products on its marketplace. Now, in this side-by-side -side example, you can see the impact of pre-rendering leading to a much faster load time, even when using a slow connection and even when the browser cache isn't primed. Now, while this particular example may be an extreme example, overall, they saw a 4.8 times better LCP of their product description page, which used speculation rules. Now, one of the main concerns that we're very conscious of is that speculative navigations do have a cost. It does take extra bandwidth and CPU to prefetch and pre-render these pages. And it's not just users that bear the costs. Site owners don't really want every page view to result in double or triple or much worse infrastructure costs either. So the Chrome team has thought very hard about minimizing these speculation costs. So let's talk about some of the ways that we're trying to reduce that risk. Document rules and the eagerness setting that I talked about earlier allows the browser to avoid speculating until the user gives a clear indication that they intend to visit the URL. This alone can drastically reduce the chances of over-speculating. On top of this, Chrome has added limits to the amount of speculations that can be completed per page, depending on the eagerness setting. For prefetches, Chrome allows up to 50 speculative navigations per page load. That seems high. We'll talk about in a minute about why we allow such a high number there. For pre-render, there's a more conservative limit of 10 pre-renders per page load, as they'll fetch sub-resources and also use up a bit of memory in CPU. Now, these limits are upper limits to really prevent overuse of this API. They're not targets, and speculations should only be used when they make sense. With lower eagerness settings, Chrome will, this is the one where Chrome will only speculate when the user gives an intent with the hover or the, or the mouse down action. In these cases, it's even possible for the browser, as you saw, to change the, the links that are speculated. Therefore, as the browser can act on these signals, it's possible to use much lower limits with a FIFO-based queue to really conserve memory. And that's what we saw earlier in those demos. With the browser in control, it can also avoid speculative navigations in certain circumstances. Chrome avoids speculation in the following conditions, thus reducing the impact of spending resources on speculations. It won't speculate when saved data is turned on, when energy saver is triggered due to low battery, when Chrome detects it's under memory pressure, when pages are opened in background tabs, or when the user is turned off preloads in their settings. Additionally, cross-origin iframes are not loaded during the pre-rendering stage and are held back until the page is activated by the user. I'll talk more about that one in a minute. Speculation rules also makes efficient use of the HTTP cache. Navigation speculations are primarily intended for same origin navigations. For these, there's often a large amount of reuse between different pages. Many pages within a site will reuse the same assets from site-wide CSS, JavaScript, icons, logos, imagery. The API both fetches from the cache, but also saves any resources it has to fetch into the cache. So even when a speculation is not ultimately used, its assets are still stored in the HTTP cache and may benefit future navigations, whether pre-rendered or not. For example, if you pre-render a product page on an e-commerce site, 
or an article in a news or a blog, you're likely loading a lot of assets that will be used by other product pages and other articles. So that previous speculation, even if it's not used, it's not entirely off wasted. And you often be bene uh, benefit future navigations anyway if you go to a different product or a different article. You'll have the JavaScript and the other access for that page type cached. OK, that leaves the HTML document itself and the media, the images, and so on. So HTML documents are actually often a lot smaller than people think. According to the HTTP archive, the median HTML document is only 30 kilobytes in size. Even going all the way up to the 90th percentile, documents are less than 150 kilobytes. Not small, but not as large as many people think. For the images, lazy loading has also become incredibly popular on the web, with 30% of sites using native lazy loading in their images, again, according to the HTTP archive. And for these sites, images well below the fold will not be loaded during inspective loads. And as I mentioned earlier, for speculative loads, cross-origin iframes are not loaded during pre-rendering. This can often be heavier content, like videos, map embeds, and they're not loaded until the page is activated. So this is like a really enhanced lazy loading, where even the above-the-fold frames are not loaded during the pre-rendering phase. And all that's by default, by the way. There are APIs that site owners can also use to delay certain activities until after activation. This example calls a function after the pre-rendering change event is detected. And that's a new event that we've added specifically for this API. You can use it to take care of activities you may not want to happen until after the page is activated. For example, starting an animation, or fetching large resources, or connecting to a chat server, whatever. Analytics is one such activity that usually makes more sense to happen after activation. You want to measure actual real user visits, not potential visits that they may or may not click on upon. Now, Google Analytics does this automatically. You don't need to do this. But other analytics providers may not do this yet, as this is a fairly new API. So you can use those same APIs to delay those. This example um, uses a promise-based methodology to make it easier to slot into existing code. And ads are similar. Like Google Analytics, Google Publisher Tag, or GPT, and Google AdWords already delay automatically with knowledge of this API. But again, other ad providers may not do this. Though, as ads are often served in cross-origin iframes, the display of those ads and any analytics from those display will not be delayed until after uh, activation happens anyway. And with prefetch, or even with pre-render on a lower eagerness setting, these examples may be less of a concern, as there's a much, much higher chance that the page will actually be visited by the user. So that's why those modes can be a good stepping stone into this API while you update your code to add these wrappers. So speculative navigations do have a cost, but that cost may well be lower than you think. It pays to be mindful of the cost of navigation speculations, but at the same time, be aware that some of some of the mitigations that reduce this cost. In many cases, it's the cost of loading a single extra iframe onto a page, and many pages just load many iframes as it is. OK, so we're pretty excited about the potential for speculation rules. And we're already seeing a great uptick of this API from the ecosystem with various platforms and partners that we've worked with. WordPress powers well over a third of all the sites on the web. And it's often used for static websites where speculation rules can be a low risk, easy win. As part of Google's work on the WordPress performance team, we've written a plugin to make enabling this as simple as possible. By default, pre renders most URLs with a moderate eagerness as soon as the plugin is activated. But I'd offer some settings to allow you to change this default, should a site wish. We saw 10,000 installs of this plugin in the first few weeks after it was announced. That's 10,000 sites benefiting from speculation rules performance gains. We've also received numerous pieces of very positive feedback from the WordPress community for this plugin. And although this plugin is an experiment at present, we'd love to be able to integrate this into WordPress core should it prove successful. Akamai is one of the world's leading CDNs and has seen some impressive results from implementing speculation rules, including a 25% LCP improvement on an already highly optimized site. They've also documented how their Akamai customers can enable speculation rules through the CDN using a special HTTP header and are working with customers to rule this out further. NitroPack are a web performance company that started, speculating, that started experimenting with speculation rules since the API became available. And as you may have heard during the developer keynote, 
Keynote, NitroPack implemented speculation rules in conjunction with their own custom machine learning models. They were able to shave nearly 40 seconds off the site-wide page load time through their use of their navigation AI product. They saw a 75% improvement to LCP from speculation rules alone, and an extra 20% of that on navigation AI offering. And it wasn't just LCP that benefited. NitroPack saw an 80% improvement to CLS for pages that were pre-rendered. You often see layout shifts as the page is loading. So by doing that in the background before this display to the user, you save that CLS, and the metric understands that and measures that. Cloudflare is another CDN experimented with speculation rules. And Cloudflare powers approximately 20% of all websites. They've been working on a machine learning prediction model using the site traffic analysis of those using the Cloudflare network that iterates in real time as more traffic is seen. Using this, they've managed to see up to 98.9% .9 accuracy in predicting the next navigation in the lab. They're just completing lab testing now and are starting to roll speculation rules out to customers with the ultimate aim of rolling this out to a large percentage of their customer base. And those are just some of the success stories we've seen with this API. We have many such success stories with a growing number of platforms and companies that have integrated support for speculation rules either already or coming soon. And if you're interested in, in, in implementing it into your platform or frameworks, come and speak to me after it. But why are we so obsessed with shaving off more time? Isn't 2.5 seconds good enough? Well, another exciting thing about this API, on top of the web performance gains, is the new opportunities it can lead to. The View Transitions API is a new API to allow developers to more easily animate between pages. Last year, we launched the same document view transitions for SPAs, and soon we'll launch cross-document view transitions for multi-page sites. For a view transition to be really effective, sites need to reduce any delay getting that new page ready so the browser can start the transition as early as possible. And one of the best ways of doing this is with speculation rules. Cross-document view transitions and pre-render really are a match made in heaven. In this demo, you can clearly see the difference between the view transition without pre-render on the left and with pre-render on the right. They both have the same transition effect between the pages, but even that small delay on the left pulls you out of the experience a little bit. Whereas on the right, with pre-render, the same transition start as soon as the link is clicked and feels much more smooth. Now, if you want to know more about view transitions, check out Bramus' talk at this Google I.O. for more information. And this is just one example of the Speculation Rules API enabling new opportunities by just taking the performance issue off the table. We're really excited about the Speculation Rules API. And we're expecting to see a lot of growth of this API in 2024 and beyond. Hopefully, this talk has given you a little taste of the API and you're eager to give it a spin. Well, everything I've talked about today is available in Chrome right now. You can start using this API now, and your users can benefit from it right away. Check out our documentation on developer.chrome.com at this short link to answer any questions. And it's also been documented on NDN, if you prefer. And we'd love to hear your feedback on how you're getting on with this API. There's details how to provide that feedback at the bottom of that link. And for Google I.O., we've also published a code lab to walk you through adding this API to your site in a step-by-step -step manner. Thank you for your attention, and I look forward to 2024 being the year of more instant navigation.